for women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 28th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Last week, we watched in amazement as the U.S. Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson endured more than 20 hours of pointed questions during her U.S. Supreme Court confirmation hazing. The live hazing event that allowed U.S. Senators to ask probing, incisive questions about Judge Katanji's criminal sentencing records and qualifications elicited a collective gasp from viewers as we watched the spectacle that at one point seemed like the drill sergeant scene from the movie Full Metal Jacket. Judge Katanji, a graduate of Harvard and Harvard Law School, was an editor of the Law Review and went on to clerk for Justice Stephen G. Breyer, whom President Biden has chosen her to replace. She put in eight years as a trial judge before ascending to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia in 2021. None of this mattered to certain Republican senators who interrogated her as though they were cross-examining her on a murder charge. Republican senators yelled at her and repeatedly insinuated that she was a terrorist and child sex trafficker sympathizer. But Judge Katanji kept her cool the entire time, firmly reminding them that the task at hand was to examine her qualifications. The crazy part is Judge Katanji was raised in Miami and she was a judge, which probably means that she usually had the ultimate authority in situations. This situation was likely the first time in a long time that she didn't technically have the upper hand yet. She kept the situation under control anyway by remaining poised. She understood that the hazing event was designed to disrupt her. She understood their why so she could rest in her why. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson is about to make history as the first black woman to serve on the US Supreme Court. And she knows that no amount of hazing will stop that. In the midst of all the chaos and disrespect of all the people present, we got to see a black male senator stand up for her. Senator Cory Booker used his time in front of the microphone to uplift Judge Katanji. He did not berate her or question her character to impress the Republican hazers. He did not feel the need to knock her down so that he could be viewed as greater. He didn't care to compete with her because he saw her success as an extension of his own. He stood out among the antagonizers to offer a vision of success for the hopeful nominee. This is what he said. The greatest country in the world, the United States of America, will be better because of you. Wow. We agree. Keep going, Judge Katanji. We are following your light. In other news, Billionaire philanthropist and novelist Mackenzie Scott recently donated $275 million to Planned Parenthood, the Re reproductive health care nonprofit. Mackenzie's donations is the largest ever gift made to the organization. What does this mean for women? Well, we're about to witness the expansion of the super center that takes care of our reproductive needs. Planned Parenthood provides affordable, preventative, and maintenance care for our reproductive health, including a variety of birth control options, testing and treatment for sexually transmitted infections, and screenings for cervical and other cancers. Planned Parenthood offers reproductive health care for men, LGBT services, including hormone therapy for transgender patients, sex education, and general health care. Planned Parenthood is widely known for providing abortion services, and, and they do do that but in a non-judgmental way. But when thinking of Planned Parenthood, we should also think of them as a team we want to partner with when we truly care about planning for the future of our families. Family planning should be a priority and Planned Parenthood is the center that will guide all of us to create the families we deserve and desire. Thank you for this amazing gift, Mackenzie. In other news, the UN Human Rights Body has determined that the criminalization of consensual same-sex relations between women in Sri Lanka is a human rights violation. The determination sets a major legal precedent holding that the criminalization of lesbian and bisexual women violates the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. 
The determination has wide reaching implications for lesbian and bisexual women across the globe who suffer under laws that criminalize them for who they love. This case was filed by Rosamna Flamer Caldera, a Sri Lankan woman who is also the founder and executive director of Equal Ground, the nonprofit organization seeking economic, social, cultural, civil, and political rights for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, and questioning community of Sri Lanka. Are people still antagonizing lesbian and gay individuals? Oh yeah. Just ask Rosanna. She first filed the grievance that led to the UN human rights determination eight years ago and says that to this day, she still receives distasteful messages and harassment for being who she is. Let's talk with Rosanna. Welcome to the feisty Rosanna. So glad you're here today. Congratulations on being the catalyst for this important discussion and win for LGBTIQ rights and peace of mind. Rosanna, please tell us what happened that led to you filing for UN protection on behalf of all queer folks in Sri Lanka. Well, firstly, Terika, thank you very much for having me on the show, uh, the feisty news for women. It sounds amazing. Um, to be quite honest, um, I live in a country called Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka has a statute, the penal code, that basically uh, criminalized adult same-sex sexual relations. In 1995, they uh, amended the laws and by dropping the word male from the, the, the text of the law, it now includes women as well. So as a lesbian woman in Sri Lanka, um, we are first as women, we are, you know, um, third class citizens. Um, and as a lesbian woman, even further down the, the, the ladder rung, so to speak. So, you know, it has been a, a series of uh, issues that I have faced, you know, from general public, from the police, from the government, um, you know, and it's been a, a difficult a thing to, to have to negotiate and navigate. A couple of glaring uh, uh, issues was one was that, you know, the uh, Women and Children's Bureau of uh, the police were having uh, discussions and, and presentations at a university and uh, at the army women's corps and so on and so forth. And they categorically started blaming the LGBT community for the spread of pedophilia in, in, and child abuse in Sri Lanka. And then they put my face, my picture up and said, you know, she leads this organization that is doing this. So basically calling me a pedophile as well. So that was one thing. The second thing that really triggered all of this was also because um, there was this guy who used to come uh, down my street, you know, uh, making a big noise in his uh, bread cart. And uh, I used to tell him, please, this is a private, uh, you know, road, stop it. Yeah. And one day when I was coming home from work, uh, I was in my car and his bread cart was uh, blocking, um, you know, my, my, forward progress. So I asked him to move to, to reverse. And he got really upset at that. You know, how dare a woman, especially a woman looking like me, ask him uh, to uh, reverse. So he got out of his truck and he came and he tried to drag me out of my car and beat me up. He couldn't because I had my locks on. And then he said to me, I'll show you what a real man looks like. And then he went in front of my car and started to take his pants down. Yeah. Um, which I went ahead and recorded. Um, so um, by the time he got to that point where his underwear and his backside was almost visible and he was about to turn to show me his front side, uh, one of the ladies down the road uh, shouted at him and said, yeah, you know, you are blocking this. You just come and, you know, I need a, a loaf of bread. So you better come and give me the bread and let this lady go. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's, that's how that incident stopped. But I did report him to the police. Um, and, um, you know, I think, what tipped the scales was the fact that, you know, I had the recording of him pulling his pants down. Of course, you know, the name calling and the, you know, uh, harassment you receive every single time, you know, um, it, it, it's unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. But I feel that not only because Sri Lanka is a very patriarchal country, I also feel that um, it's because uh, men most citizens actually can't understand what it is to be uh, from the LGBTIQ uh, you know, community. And years and years of brainwashing by first the British and then by our governments and clergy 
um, has led to people thinking that this is a bad, bad thing. Um, and that's part of our work or, and has been for the last um, 18 years um, is to sensitize and educate the public so that they are more aware of, you know, what LGBTIQ people are or who they are and that there's nothing to be afraid of them or, uh, you know, worry about them because they don't have mental issues. They don't, they're not automatically pedophiles because they're LGBTIQ people and so on and so forth. So you had to break down all the stereotypical, you know, thoughts people have in their heads about our community. Wow. They put your name and picture on a report that blamed lesbians for pedophilia. I know you were mad. But you did the best thing by filing a grievance and getting the ball rolling for legal protection and acknowledgement of the violation by the UN. While all this is going on and you're growing your organization equal ground and still dealing with the daily battles of being a queer, masculine dressing woman, fighting for LGBTIQ rights in a country where your presence is seen as a threat, how do you keep going? What do you have to tell yourself to stay motivated to keep up the fight? Well, I'm one of those very honorary persons, you know, I mean, I get really <clears throat> upset when somebody tells me, don't do it, especially when I know that what I'm doing is right. So the harder they push, the more I push back. And that's just been my modus operandi for, you know, the, the entire 18 years that Equal Ground has been in, in, in existence and for the 22 plus years of activism that I have uh, been involved with uh, on behalf of the LGBTIQ community. But the problem is that you know, I know that I have right on my side. So whatever happens, you know, I'm not going to back down. I will never back down from a fight. So I guess my mama and papa, you know, taught me well. <laughs> That's right, Rosanna. Kudos to your parents for raising a woman who stands up for others. You are the perfect example of feminine leadership. You saw a problem and you took action to correct it without being asked to do it. Thank you, Rosanna. Oh, time for a break. How is the process of divorce about to change in April? Did Will Smith really slap Chris Rock in the mouth during the Oscars last night? Oh my God. All the details on these stories and more are coming up next. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Jinjo King. I'm a cosmetic chemist and brand owner for Fan Love Beauty. Fan Love Beauty is an inspirational beauty brand. We develop beauty products for people who inspire, educate, or entertain the society. The inspiration of my clean beauty brand, Fan Love Beauty, came when um, my celebrity crush, business mentor, Damon Jung of Shark Ten, was with me at a meeting. And he took out a lip balm in front of me. I was like, Damon, if it's something that's so close to you, that's in your pocket, on your lips, it has to be mine because I'm a cosmetic chemist. We also donate part of the proceeds to Suicide Prevention Foundation because we believe if people can stay longer and using beauty products that are healthy and good for them, they will have even more contribution to the society. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Oh my gosh. There was some drama at the Oscar Awards last night. When Chris Rock came out to present the Oscar for Best Documentary at the Academy Awards, he noticed Will Smith and his wife Jada Pinkett in the audience. So he decided to make a joke about Jada, who is currently rocking a ball style because of her immune disorder, alopecia. He said, she looks like she could star in G.I. Jane. Will Smith did not like that at all. And the world watched as he calmly walked onto the stage. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Chris Rock was stunned. Will Smith returned to his seat in the audience and yelled out, keep my wife's name out your mouth. Damn. That was hot. Did you see that? That's two for two in one show. Two men standing up for women. Two black men. 
There are black men who love us. Thanks, Will. If you don't have a man like Will Smith who will knock a in the mouth for your honor, you're probably thinking about divorce right now, and I completely understand. Thankfully, because of a new divorce law reform, you may be well on your way to being single without much hassle. In the most significant reform to divorce law for 50 years, the Divorce, Dissolution, and Separation Act 2020 will go into effect on April 6th. From this point, couples wishing to divorce will not have to give a reason or place blame on one of the other. If you don't want to be married anymore, all you have to do is say so without citing a reason publicly or having to face the shame of being accused by your partner of wrongdoing. The couple can present a joint application for a divorce or just one person can do so, stating that the marriage has ir irretrievably broken down. Even if one person decides to file alone, the other person cannot contest the filing, though they have to wait 20 weeks before the conditional order is filled. No-fault divorces are quicker, easier, and less expensive than at-fault ones. You expend less energy, drop less money on legal fees. However, spousal support isn't granted in no-fault divorces, so when you're done with the person, you're done with everything. Stand up. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty News.